When I was at the sustainable community in Missouri, we identified that when people communicate, there's always one transmitter and one receiver. Yeah. And it's both of our jobs to communicate effectively. Yeah. For me to say as clearly as possible what I actually mean. <laughs> Bubba. Okay. For me to say as clearly as possible what I actually mean. <laughs> You're fucking up my mojo. Alright. No, not you. Bubba. <laughs> um, and for like the receiver to make sure that she or he um, really understands what the other person is saying. Yeah. Not with really like cool gang songs. What are you saying? What's this one? What's the, what's the blood one? Oh gosh, <laughs> you're doing gang signs. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just like in terms of like relationship conflict that we mean we all have patterns and things like that that we're working through. And that's part of like growth mm. and you know evolving is breaking your patterns mm -hmm. i guess when we get stuck in cycles where we're not growing it's just like we're having the same argument over and over mm -hmm. and over again it's just i feel like that happens for like a lot of different reasons and so what i'm hearing is that sometimes in relationships we get stuck doing the same things or saying yeah. the same things yeah. has that ever happened in your life yeah i mean i would say so like we'll, we'll okay be uh, my current um, relationship i would say with sex currently so there are moments where there's probably a lot more, you know, I won't go really go into it, but anyway, like my boyfriend like, will like try to have sex and then it's going, going, going. I feel uncomfortable and want to stop for whatever reason. I'm not in the mood or something doesn't feel right or whatever. And then he kind of shuts down and feels rejected. And then I get confused and then it, more emotional and then he kind of shuts down even more and it turns into like this big thing. But it's kind of like a cyclical, like, ineffective communication. Like a lot of this cyclical stuff can be worked through if we can just you know, be communicate honest. properly and be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like really honest. And yeah. that's hard for people. Yeah. When you, when you catch yourself, like having a thought and holding it in, Yeah. you know, like that's really destructive to honesty because honesty isn't just saying the truth. Yeah. Honesty is like saying what you feel. Yeah. And that some people don't, aren't even in, in touch with what they really feel mm. and their really true yeah. honesty to begin with, which makes it kind of tough too. Yeah. You know, you honesty has to start with being honest with yourself. Yeah. And that's pretty big. I feel like I'm losing it. Um. <sighs> this this merry-go-round could be resolved by having more of an intent to like solve an issue as opposed to just being a part of the drama so like going into a conversation with a goal in mind mm. and like staying on a certain path to get there as opposed to just feeding into this you know the drama of and attention that you get from like you know married around conversations mm. i i once did a workshop on sacred communication and that was the first thing well, the second thing, the first thing was setting up sacred space so that we know like, that this is safe to feel, to express ourselves. Yeah. I am in this place and here I am okay to say whatever I feel. And the second one is setting an intention. Oh, wow. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. A space is really important too. Yeah. Like a safe place. That's yeah, because really how many important. times have you been in a situation where you don't feel safe to speak? Yeah. You know, much less say something that is honest. Yeah, yeah. That, which makes you vulnerable. You yeah, know? for sure. Like, I feel like venting is, like, okay, but it's not going to accomplish anything. And venting can be just as important as, like, discussing something to, like, accomplish a goal or to work through something. But I feel like it's good to discern the two. Mm, sure. Like, there's a time to release. Yeah. And a time to express honestly. Yeah. And there's a time to resolve. Yeah, to accomplish things. And they're two very different things. I feel like they oh, get Oh, wow. I, I agree 100%. And that sometimes we try and do both. Yeah. You know, just like sometimes we try and like give, well, in sex especially, sometimes we try and give pleasure and sometimes we try and receive pleasure yeah. and sometimes we try and do them at the same time. It doesn't always really work out. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Um, I feel like if I were to like break it down, like into listening and expressing, okay. if we could just like split up like that. Okay. For like initially. Okay. Like I feel like if let's say it with so listening. So we're talking about listening right now. Yeah. So I feel like with listening, I feel like that involves a lot of like um, strength and skill and focus because I think when you're listening you're really multitasking which makes it kind of a hard job because mm. just like people are saying things but they may not be like matching it with like their body language wow. and their, their energy so you'd have to like take all of that in plus like what they're saying so it's just like to put the pieces together but I feel like to, in order to do that you have to be like super present and like be like I'm just going to focus solely on this right now and not be like thinking about what you're going to say next or just like letting your mind wander or you know like focusing on like how what they're saying makes you feel and like some sort of retaliation or you know whatever like all that is like secondary to like a listener so what i hear you saying is that a listener is supposed to be an emotional rock of some sort yeah and not just an emotional rock but also sort of like an emotional rock that is able to sort out the pieces and yeah. lots of the emotional um range and monitor some of the like the actual thoughts embedded in the conversation. Yeah. Whereas I think this is a very masculine position because it just involves being just strong and calm and just a witness to what's going on, you know? Mm. And I, I see this more of like a masculine thing. And then I feel like, like if we can move on to yes, tell the speaker. Me Tell me about what it means to be an effective speaker. Um, truth and honesty, we talked about that. Like that's like first and foremost. Oh, and then I'm, I'm gonna say that speaking, I guess this comes from like personal experience that speaking is very difficult just because I feel like I come from like a rather clogged up throat chakra that I feel like I've been working through. She actually had throat surgery. You might not be able to see it. Morgan had throat surgery, like thyroid surgery when she was younger. So it's like a lot of like, you know, energetic throat stuff that I've definitely like tried hard to work through. But just words can be clumsy sometimes and translating what you feel into words is like very difficult. So I feel like just taking your time and just making that and I feel like also being a listener, I would say, is extremely difficult. So expressing gratitude for people that are listening, I feel like is really important, too. That's like a really hard job uh, to you do. You brought some really great points up. Thank you for listening to me and my beautiful friend, mm -hmm. Morgan. But also, yeah. you talked about how words can sort of be a prison for emotions. Yeah, they really you know? can. And, and like... And you're the one that said this to me originally, is that words are just clumsy. Like, you said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, how can you feel your emotional range without thoughts? Because it's there. You yeah. know, it's almost like a, I feel it through my body, I feel it in the air. How does sadness feel in your body? Yeah. How does anger feel in your body? You know, how does joy and ecstasy feel inside your body? Yeah. You know? There's that. And it's difficult. I think taking time. And the listener needs to just be really patient, to, especially for men, because they've been taught to just, like, only feel, like, you know, sexual feelings and, and anger. So especially for guys to, like, figure out how to take all this stuff and process it and put it into words is, like, really difficult. When I have difficult conversations, um, I generally like to talk to myself and be honest with how I feel. And then start off by saying, this is how I feel. And giving the other person a chance to respond to that. Mm -hmm. So if we were a couple and I would say something like, um, Morgan, I care deeply about you. Um, I want you to be happy, but lately I've felt distance growing between us. Mm -hmm. And then you ha I, I pause to let her respond. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes an organic thing that we're both creating. Yeah. And um, I feel like when it comes up when someone's, like, um, expressing their feelings like that, and even I know it's, I'm sure it's hard to hear sometimes because your ego takes a bit of a blow when someone else mm. is unhappy and brings, like, some sort of criticism um, or problem. But you said, like, I really love you, and, like, you know, I'm really happy with us, but I just feel like we've been going distant. So it's kind of only, like, you would say, like, something nice, and then the criticism, and then something nice again. So it just kind of makes it easier for people to hear. 
But and you still get your point across. And, and if you were to react yeah. by saying, why do you feel distant? I do this and that. Then that's another sign that... Yeah, that's hopping on a merry-go-round. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's, that's exactly just a drama is. cycle. It is a drama cycle. Let's see what else I had. Oh, um, oh, um, I'm sorry. That's what I wanted to talk about. I feel like that's a very difficult thing for some people, is I'm sorry. And I feel like at the end of any conflict, I think both people should genuinely apologize, regardless of what the situation was. Well, what does it mean to say sorry then? And why is it important for both people well, to say it? I feel like sorry just means that my ego is not important than you. That's all that sorry means. It's wow. like however I feel or what I think about a situation is not important than like It's like it's like I bow to your, you know, authentic presence. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like even maybe using a different word than sorry, if some people are, you know, can't agree on what sorry means, you can make up your own word. Maybe. What word do you want to make up? Um banana. Banana. <laughs> banana. 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 Oh yeah. gosh. <laughs> Muffin on with me. Oh, it's an om against muffin. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, purr, purr. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. For now. Okay.